have your Bibles. Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Say amen when you're there. And Jesus entered and passing through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Talk about getting ready. Talk about being prepared. Yeah. Hallelujah. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up. Talk about wanting and needing to be on time. Mm -hmm. Saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. Hallelujah. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. I tell you, when Jesus talks to you, it matters how you receive him. <laughs> and when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. Jesus will hang out with people that you won't. Let you know that you might not be as much like Jesus as you think. Mm-hmm. Kind of interesting here. It says, and Zacchaeus stood with what was just stated from the crowd. And the fact that he was called by name from the Lord, he, he said unto the Lord, I don't know. I'm just going to use a little bit of evangelistic license on this story. And maybe he felt conviction from the crowd and compassion from the Lord. Some emotions going on here, but it stirred him and caused him to just stand and, and, and for a short man, it had to be very unimpressive, but he stood and said unto the Lord, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. I'm going to tell you something. You will be a giver when you meet Jesus. You can't be stingy and know Jesus. Just, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. Hey, dads, it matters how you meet Jesus. It matters how you respond. It will affect your home. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. Lord, I pray, God, that there's an impartation. There's a quickening, God. There's a, a gleaning and an absorbing tonight of your word. Lord, that there is a difference between the crowd and the converts. Lord, I pray that we all want to be converts. And everybody say in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. We know that multitudes of people followed Jesus at times. There were times there were crowds. There were times he was surrounded from weddings and funerals. Jesus made impact on individuals in crowds. Out of thousands, somehow, the teachings of Jesus, the moving of the disciples among the crowd, led a lad with a lunch to find faith. A Roman centurion at some point was impacted by Jesus. I often wonder if it was Cornelius. I don't know. Maybe a relative. Something had happened. But lawyers, farmers, lepers, fishermen, women, children, people from all areas of life 
were affected by Jesus and his followers. I believe Jesus is still the most talked about figure today in history. Saying that each of us must and are making a choice with what we're going to do with Jesus mirrored in the moment that we find where Zacchaeus meets Jesus. It would behoove us all to read through those nine verses and watch the transformation of an individual, the changing of a mindset, the changing of a taker to a giver. There was a fourth grader by the name of Billy that just a short time before his birthday, he had an accident, was in crutches. And so when he celebrated his birthday, he's walking around on crutches and his parents were taking him to school for the day and there was going to be a little celebration in his class for his birthday, but he wasn't able to carry the cupcakes into his school classroom without help. And so his mother asked their elder sixth grader, Noah, can you help him carry those in? Noah responded, I could, but I don't want to. The dad spotting a teaching moment commented and said, Noah, what would Jesus do? Noah answered, well, I think Jesus would heal, heal Billy so he could carry in his own stupid cupcakes. <laughs> we all have a different view of Jesus because of our differences. That moment when Jesus looks at one of his disciples who's been following and tells him, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. And he says, and when thou art converted. I wonder if Jesus walked in here. And let us each know who's really converted, how many would be running to an altar. Or maybe even running for cover. When was Zacchaeus converted? Was it somewhere between the limb and the ground? Well, for the point of reference, when was the prodigal son converted? <laughs> when was he finally on the road to restoration? Was it the moment he said, I will arise? Is it the moment of movement? Out of the crowd. On the road to conversion. When are you converted? Was it for Zacchaeus when he said, I will climb down? Maybe it started when he was running for a tree. We must realize there's no interval. Listen to me between surrender and conversion. God would that all men everywhere would repent. True repentance leads to salvation. Seeking God is the prime attribute that leads to salvation. Paul speaking to the overly superstitious Athenians who had multiple deities and obviously had a plethora of, of shrines to gods, including an unknown God. And Paul drew their attention and, and to Jesus and he, and he makes a statement in, in Acts 17 and 27, and they should seek the Lord. If you're a seeker, if you'll seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him, there's an action involved here, and find him. Though he be not far from any, every one of us. He's not far for the seeker. Mm. I do find it humorous in, in Zacchaeus' condition. Kind of amazing that the overlooked little man 
would climb a sycamore tree to overlook a crowd to see Jesus. Obviously, his stature was quite stark. Because in doing so, he separated himself from the crowd. It separated him from everybody else. I, I, I don't know if he may be the shortest man in the crowd, but he was definitely, you know, we could assess one of them. But regardless, from, from, from the moment he'd heard about Jesus, which made him compelled to want to see Jesus, to, to realizing he's coming, to running ahead, to be prepared. There's something going on here where someone is going, I got to see Jesus. I, I want, I've heard, but I want to know for myself. Time and chapter chance happens to all of us. And I, I say that quickly, but you need to listen. How many's got a Bible? How well do you really know Jesus? How many of you got a prayer life? How many of you really know Jesus? Uh, how many of you, you can argue pre, mid, or post, uh, baptism in Jesus, argue all, but let me ask you this question. Know the answer to this. Are you really converted? All of you. Our mind, soul, strength. His will, not my will. Finances and all, time and all. Are you converted? Because you have right now to cultivate today, I implore you to like Zacchaeus, restore again and cultivate some curiosity to know Jesus. To learn about Jesus. Some of us have gotten to the point, and it's a danger for a preacher. It's a danger for a minister. It's definitely a danger to anyone who's been around the church a little while to think they got it sewed up. Do you really know him? You may have that subject real well, but do you really know him? Are you really like him? Uh, if he was to walk in and, and, and look at one another, there'd be no difference in the reflection. There'd be no difference because of your conduct, your attitude, what you listen to, what you watch, where you go, what you do, how you speak. Matthew 11 declares, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Have you stopped? You think you really got it sewed up? You ready to voice your opinion as fact? For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Where's your curiosity level in Jesus today? I, I, I can honestly tell you that that thought has really stirred me. I was speaking with a pastor friend this past week, and I, in all honesty, I'm just not a fear, but an honoring of God, realizing I don't know enough. I don't know enough. <laughs> I know his name. I know some doctrinal truths. Uh, yeah, I can preach. I feel his anointing. I've got the Holy Ghost. I speak in tongues. I got baptized in his name. Uh, but the altar is just uh, the beginning. Where's your curiosity? Curiosity is said to have killed the cat. But in this case of Zacchaeus, it saved the soul. Where's your curiosity? Are you more concerned about the things of this world? Ask yourself, be honest. Or are you invigorated to go search out something about the world and let the Bible gather just a little more dust today? Are you really, are you really sure you really know Jesus and all there is about him that you could just table that and get on Facebook or go head out and work on this or work on that and do so many other things and come waltz it in here on a Sunday, Wednesday, and a Wednesday. So sure you're a convert and not just someone in the crowd. 
Curiosity will determine many things about your life. Points of view matter. And I want to cover Jesus and Zacchaeus because taking Zacchaeus' point of view, that arousing of his curiosity probably explains how he became a convert. Because curiosity led to discovery. He heard about Jesus and decided to find out for himself. His curiosity had an impact on the searching. It's not a foreign concept biblically. Moses turned aside to see the burning bush. Rahab's curiosity with the rumors and the things about the children of Israel caused her to help the spies. The Nicodemus coming, and I spoke about him last week. There was a form of active curiosity. Where's your active curiosity today? Are you, are you compelled to, to crack open the book and say, what? can I learn today? What, what can I find out today? How I, can, can I just waltz up here having not studied or read thinking I got it all and shoot from the hip with a few colloquialisms and a few sayings and think I can grace everybody with my astute relationship with Jesus? What about the motive? Behind the lady with the issue of blood. She didn't know. But in her sickness and in her desperation and in her situation, if I might, oh, the curiosity that led her despite how she felt, despite the fact that no one was going to help her, she had to push through from behind. If I could. Blind Bartimaeus, he didn't know. He couldn't see. The curiosity that led to a cry for help. You notice the ailments, the shortcomings of those that are curious. We like to present our strengths and hide our weaknesses. Curiosity is the strong desire to know or learn a fact. We see that in Zacchaeus. Yet, what about Christ? What about Jesus' viewpoint, standpoint? What, what view do we get that? Get there. In all honesty, I believe he knew. I believe he had Zacchaeus in mind. Because when he came to the tree, he looked up used his name and asked him to come down. And he said, today I must. Is that me? We need to work on that back there and try to turn down, try to do something if we can. Today I must abide at thy house. I'm, I'm not just coming to point you out in a tree. I'm coming to your house. See, many of us, I, I like Jesus at the church. But if I bring him home, if I bring him home, it's going to affect how I live. It's going to affect how I talk. It's going to be affect what I watch. It's going to affect my finances. It's going to affect my fellowship. It's going to, mm. The I must implies importance. I believe this was a moment among the events that Jesus had planned, much like the woman at the well when he said, I must need. So, or how about he waited and delayed for, for, for Lazarus to go ahead so that he could, there's just some, he just didn't happen chance he walk around, around just whenever something came. How many of us are getting up with the idea of, I gotta do some things for Are you a convert or part of the crowd? Only two people had plans. Only two people stuck out from the crowd. Jesus and someone that said, I got to see him. Was Zacchaeus planning? 
had the date been set, had he been waiting? Because Jericho and Jerusalem really aren't that far apart. He financially very easily could have said, you know, I'm just going to go check this out. Was this a today for Zacchaeus? What's amazing is that we have a seeking sinner and a seeking savior meet. In this same chapter, it says, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Is that a coincidence? I, I, I just don't think so. There are orchestrated moments in our lifetime, in our timeline, like growth rings on a tree. There are moments that shape our lives and eternities. In fact, in Luke 19, it's a series of divine moments and Jesus is speaking and he's dealing with the concepts of, of missed moments. In Luke 19 and 44, he makes that statement because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Hey, wait a minute. Are you curious enough? to not miss your moment or you just play in church and you've been around and you got a title or you got a job or you got right regularly seat sit and you just it's just day after day and are you a convert are you a part of the crowd so we got Jesus coming through town and Zacchae was was there and Jesus is seeking the lost and Zacchaeus we know ran to climb the tree to see a divine moment was set to happen. It's, it's, it's an amazing story. It's divine trajectory. <laughs> An intersection of destiny. How many of us look back in life? Well, man, if I'd have known this, I would have done. Or if I'd have known that was going to be worth it, I'd have bought it. If I'd have known they were going to be there, I'd have done that. If I'd have known what was going to happen in the stock market, I would have, oh, if I'd have known what Yahoo was going to do. Or, or. Anybody here ever pray for healing? Has anybody here ever prayed for anything about you? Is there anything you've prayed about that you wish was just changed about? yourself or you wish was different well I wish I never had that illness or I wish I didn't have that handicap or I wish I would have had this kind of education or I wish I would have had this and man I wish I looked different was built different or I had a different social I just there's just things I don't like about me God, why'd you do this to me if I'd have been born in this kind of home or this kind of life or have this kind of Things done for me. Like blind Bartimaeus. The lady with the issue of blood. Like Zacchaeus. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. How does he fit in that group? He's not sick. He's not blind. In fact, most of us would capitalize on one thing. Oh, he's rich. The rich hath a snare. That's right. That's right. Bartimaeus is blind. The lady has a blood issue. She's sick. Which leads me to a statement that, that somebody else who was afforded a great opportunity in life and walked away for it, from it for Jesus. Paul makes this very interesting observation in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger, listen to this, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take... Really? We know that the Bible tells us in the last days men will become lovers of pleasure instead of lovers of God. 
Are you reading between the lines here? I'll take pleasure. What's this infirmity? I am a prisoner. I'm bound to this gospel. I'm tied. I'm the chiefest of sinners, but I'm also going to be the biggest servant. I am the... He's forsaken the pleasures of the world and called the pleasures of the infirmities and living for God in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. Uh, this living for God stuff. <laughs> what? A messenger of Satan to buffet me? Lest I should be exalted above measure? That buffet literally means to wrap with a fist. Look it up. Every now and then, Paul's saying, God sends an infirmity in my flesh to remind me. Uh, every now and then God allows or sends, he sends this, this, this devilish angel to come and smack me now and then to remind me, don't forget. Be glad you're not all flesh and natural and worldly. That's, where are you going with this, Paul? God allows a devil to punch him every now and then, to wake him up. This in all uh, life is cut out. It don't matter how much bigger your barns are, your houses, or what you got. That wake you up, Paul, because God allows the enemy to hit him in order to keep him grounded and understanding. Yeah, I know you know some heavenly stuff, Paul, and God's done some great things in your life, but don't you ever get elevated. Don't you ever lose your curiosity for the things of God and come to that place where you become stoic and you're no more for sitting instead of praising. You're more known for having a critical spirit instead of worshiping. The hindrance was the will of God to keep him saved. I've got to strike you as a constant reminder in your flesh to help you keep it in its place lest you become exalted. Wait a minute now. Zacchaeus? Short little man? Probably cursed his height every day. Tired of the taste of dust in his mouth. Walking around the streets of town with the camels and the goats and <sighs> hated his stature. Probably walked around with some platforms about like that. Got some platform sandals on his feet. <laughs> Probably had some anxiety about being so small. All his life he had to struggle with these physical deficiencies. Little did he know that the deficiency that he hated, the infirmity that you, oh, if God just would let me be healed to do, oh, all oh, this, oh, if this wasn't that way. Zacchaeus couldn't have known that the very thing he despised all his life would bring about the very, it would be the catalyst for the, which orchestrated the face-to-face -face meeting with Jesus because it was his shortness that caused him to climb a tree to come face-to-face -face with Jesus where he called him by name. The thing he hated propelled him to the greatest place he ever could have been. The thing that you struggle with, the thing that you think is an enemy that's hindering you, propels you to a place with God you never would have got. Like Zacchaeus, we face, and you and I face struggles. <sighs> Realizing you come up short in your life. Don't curse the struggle. Look for Jesus. 
Don't curse your problem. Elevate your seeking of his face. Don't complain about what's wrong. No matter what, find a part. I gotta find Jesus in there. I don't wanna just be in the crowd complaining and just being an onlooker. Let me get elevated in my search. Let me get elevated in finding him. I need that divine moment. And if I'm so focused on what's wrong, and if I'm so focused on what's going, I might miss the fact that my ailment is propelling me to my anointing. If you'll believe God, and like all those storied lives in the Bible that are mentioned, allow God to use your shortcomings and your curiosity to propel and compel you to see God like you never have before. Zacchaeus had no easy path. His, his life had struggled. Yes, there was failure. The Bible says he could not for the press because he was little. It was Here's a person that earnestly was trying to seek and see Jesus. His money was no help here. Your money won't help you here. His size was a liability. Zacchaeus is opposed by obstacles and shortcomings. He had no control over what was stopping him. He had no control over the crowd. And he couldn't change his stature. Well, that's it. I guess I'll just go home and forget this Jesus thing. He was not responsible for the problems he faced. It wasn't his fault. He didn't do it. He didn't create the crowd and he didn't create his stature. So we had some things that seemed to be defeating him. Well, that's not fair. So and so's got it easier than me to get to Jesus. <laughs> Can I tell you, there's no regard for fair. And be careful if you think you've superseded other people. It's not about superseding other people. It's about, did you really get and do what he called you to do? Because if it is really a contest, you know what? It's not fair that if it's a height contest, Sister Jess ain't going to win that one. And it ain't fair if it's air contest because Brother Bruce beats me all day long. It's not about fair. Be careful when you compare yourself. You think, man, I got it all together. Look at me. I, God's going to be like, oh, man, if you had any idea what I've done to propel you and what little I've done for him. or to, Oh, see, I'm about to get to something here. There's no regard for fair. Did Zacchaeus have a fair chance? Whether fair or not, he, like all of us, has an opportunity and a chance to do what we will. What do you see in your life besides obstacles? What did he see besides obstacles? Can I tell you what we all see if we'll pay attention to the text? His determination. You look at his determination in the natural and it transformed in... You saw because this little insignificant man was able <laughs> to achieve financially. Oh, look what he did financially. But he realized. Not only that, was, but it showed him. It doesn't matter what the obstacles are. I can achieve here. It doesn't matter the obstacles I can achieve there. You know, I'm not going to let it stop me. Oh, that we'd have a revival of desire and effort in this church. Some of you are missing out on the amazing because you already think you're beyond. And you miss a divine appointment. David was killing lions and bears and taking care of the family finances. And his dad called him, I need you to take lunch to, to your brothers. Delivery boy. Come here, Uber Eats. What if he got offended? What are you talking about? Don't you remember back in the day when the prophet? That's 
beneath me. It's sad that we got enough to face in the natural that we allow ourselves and our ego to place obstacles of pride in our way. And if he'd allowed that, he'd have had the lion and the bear and missed the appointment with Goliath. You ever get to the point you no longer humbly seek God, you will miss your next appointment. God didn't walk out on you, you missed the appointment. God didn't stop having revival because of you. God didn't stop winning souls. He didn't, he didn't give up and walk out and walk away. We do. We quit. We, we, we do like, do like that. well, I go a fishing. It got a little tough up in here. And I said it Sunday, where did he get that boat? Isn't it funny that we got so much to do in the world and we complain, well, I guess I can't do nothing here. We get the picture and we see some of the, the fiber of Zacchaeus and the type of man that he was. He, he didn't waste precious time complaining about being little. He didn't sit there and stand there or, 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 or bicker and complain about all the people. He ran. He ran. He, he got active. Uh, he got involved. He wasn't finding fault with his surroundings. He didn't have time to blame. He took it upon himself. If I can succeed in the world, I can succeed in the things of God. And he started to search for a better vantage point. I'm going to see Jesus come hell or high water, whatever I got it. You can't stop someone really seeking God. There's going to be a lot of people. You're in for a rude awakening when you want to stand before God thinking he stopped you. That's right. Come on. Come on. Come on. I had obstacles. This happened to me. That happened to me. That was your opportunity. Like the lady with the issue of blood came behind Jesus crawling on the ground, grabbed the hem like blind Bartimaeus crying out with all his mind. At some point, we got to decide, I don't care about the obstacles. I don't care about the things that are hindering me. I don't care about my shortcomings or my, my stature problems or my social issues. I, I don't want to just be a part of the crowd. I want to be a convert. I want to overcome some obstacles. I want to overcome some struggles. I want a desire to see Jesus and it's more important than anything else. I don't care what anybody in town thinks of me. I'm going to climb a tree and I'm going to see Jesus. It's kind of sad. We got a little squirt running through town to see Jesus. And some of us won't even walk to an altar. But no time is wasted. He didn't waste time in finding fault or blaming his situation and surroundings. Because if excuses were valid, Zacchaeus never would have been a chief among publicans or rich. He had every reason to be a nothing. But he had learned not to make a virtue out of necessity. Hmm. See, some of us hold our ailments higher than anointing and we seek the excuse of our ailment instead of seeking an anointing are you listening yeah you're a great employee but you're a lousy Christian oh you are great at athletics but you're not faithful to church oh you're a, you're a financial genius but you have a critical spirit you spend hours on Facebook but you complain about the church length Hey, that's all. We all got it somewhere. Everybody can get something out of this. Don't become a person conscious of our littleness. <laughs> Maybe it's time we take a, a page from Zacchaeus' book and run the race that is set before us climb higher than we've ever 
pen. Be the type of person that doesn't look as obstacles as stumbling blocks, but as stepping stones. And so I'm going to use this moment to get higher than I've ever been. I, I, I get it. I've been walking with God for a little while. I've been around the church a while. But you know what? I've kind of plateaued a little bit. I ain't done nothing spiritual. I ain't done nothing. There. I haven't increased my Bible. I'm not the spiritual as I could be. Hello? All of us are little in so many places. We must be willing to learn how to climb again. All barriers and struggles will not stop a person that has a mind to pursue something better. Who tonight, like Zacchaeus, would have a made up mind that I am going to see Jesus? Who here no matter where you've been or what you've done and what you've done for even the kingdom of God or the world can decide and look and say, wait a minute. I'm not happy with what I've done. I, I, if I could have done that, if I did all that in the world, in the, why haven't I done that in the church? If I could brag about this in the world and sheepishly come walk in the church as an anemic, When I spoke about Nicodemus coming to see Jesus, and tonight Zacchaeus shows us, it lets us know anyone willing, despite issues, social struggles, and shortcomings, can get to Jesus because desire finds a way. You have what you have because you desired it. Look around at your life. Look around. It wasn't you weren't hindered for what you loved. You got it. Mm. And it's sad that we have a whole bunch of stuff and crumbs of Christ. Is there anybody here that want, wants more Jesus in your home? Amen. That wants a little more Jesus in your life? Yeah. Uh, may, may, maybe if you got to that place like that. See, 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 see the problem. And I know I'm dealing with that. I feel that right now. Some of you have tried to walk around with such an elevation in God that your pride has hindered you from a purpose. And if it would take me getting on my face on this altar to help some of you quit being so prideful, I will do it. Right. But some of you are missing out. All, you've just become a talking head and the body's inactive. Do you really want your loved ones to get this? Maybe you should humble yourself, quit acting like what you're not, and start living like you should. Do you realize what Jesus said to Zacchaeus? And Jesus said unto him, this day of salvation come to this house. Wait a minute, you're talking to Zacchaeus, you're in the street, you're not there yet. But he knew when you get someone that's un, will, undenying, undeni will, be, will not be denied seeing Jesus or pursuing him and will run and will climb and will scratch and will crawl and won't let obstacles or hear, stop him. He says, I tell you what, this is going to his house. I ain't got to say nothing about it. You watch what he's going to do. What an amazing course of events for this guy. What a, what a moment that was for Zacchaeus. Let's, let me break this down as I bring it to a close. Was it hearing about Jesus that converted him? Was it his curiosity? Was it him running? Was it the climbing of the tree? Was it when Jesus stopped, looked up, called his name? Was his obedience in hastily climbing down? Was it him, and the Bible says, receiving of Jesus joyfully? Was it his acceptance of Jesus saying, I'm coming to your house? Do you see the steps that are going on here? Have you stopped somewhere in your journey with Jesus? Maybe the climbing down. I'm pastor now. I can't find a place to repent in front of my people. They might think I'm human. 
shucks. <laughs> Can I help you? If, if you don't see me make a mistake around here, something's wrong. If you're not making mistakes, you're not trying. If you haven't had a failure in a little while, you're not doing jack squat for the kingdom of God. You walk around, oh, I got it all together. Let me educate you on my, really? Stop talking, start showing. Wait a minute. Because this is another one. Was it the crowd's comments to Zacchaeus about his past? Jesus is going to go to the sinner's house? Hey, old Vinny, we can't let this go on. And he heard that, and he heard Jesus, and he had to make a decision. Are you going to live to please the crowd, or are you going to become a convert to Jesus? And you realize what he did? The stand. Right there. In front of Jesus, in front of the crowd, out loud. I'm going to give to the poor and whatever I've done wrong. The confession of a restoring of any ill-gotten gains. The mentality of, you know what, I've been so blessed, how can I not be mindful of the poor? <sighs> really, what I have to say at this point is, it was all a part of the amazing process of Zacchaeus' conversion and meeting Jesus and beginning that relationship <sighs> can we say relationship. relationship if Jesus said you, if you've done it on the least of these you've done it unto me when's the last time you've done something for Jesus Well, I pay my tithes. Uh -uh, you're just giving back to God what's his. Don't, don't, don't. And I, I, I've still got to work this and I don't be like that, like the disciple. We've given all. And then a little bit later, he's got a boat hidden. Where'd he get the boat? I'd like to think. In the book of Acts, it talks about the upper room. It gives us a short list of the portion that's there, Brother Bruce. The disciples, the mother of Jesus. I'd like to think that someone with the zeal and determination of Zacchaeus just might have been in that number. Just, just something about a guy that, that's transparent, brutally honest. Yeah, I kind of done a few deals in my life. But I, you know what? I'm going to be the best giver the church ever had. I, I just wonder if maybe while, while, while everybody's in the upper room, Zach gets us over the corner. Glory. <laughs> wow. I didn't want to be a part of the crowd. And that choice allowed me to be a part of the church. I wonder, I wonder if Nicodemus was there. Stumbling blocks can become stepping stones when you're seeking the face of God. No matter what you're facing right now, all hell could be breaking loose, but God may be setting you up for a face to face. <laughs> You, you, you may realize that maybe you've missed some time and lost time and just kind of played patty cake with God for a few years.
but shortcomings can lead to overcomings. I've been hurt. You don't understand. Yeah, I do. Turn the wound into worship. Come out of the crowd. Everybody's offended. But a worshiper ain't got time to be offended. I'm going to elevate. I'm going to elevate. I'm going to elevate myself. Oh, you don't understand the problems. I do. Just turn those into praise. It's all about perspective. And if I'm 6'4", if this little shrimp If he could, I want to encourage you that when you read the Bible, when you look at it, when you realize when it's a relationship with Jesus, stumbling blocks are stepping stones because if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. Do you realize when everybody was a part of the crowd, the most insignificant, unwanted person there became the convert. Are you converted? Forget the problems. They don't determine whether you're converted or not. Are you converted? Who cares about the status? Do you have a savior? Are you converted? Are you converted tonight? Are you persuaded? Because when when are we going to stop praying for blessings? When are we going to quit acting like we're blessed and thinking that's all? Let me ask, when's the last time you asked God for miracles? I hear people, well, we don't see miracles anymore. That's because we've become satisfied with blessings. We show up to church and we think we grace the church with our astuteness or, 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 or just some sort of level of ego arrogance that we think we've achieved. And we just pray, oh, God, blessings. Because we're so caught up in the world that we're not really spiritual. Can I ask this question? When's the last time you just spent hours seeking the face of God? Oh, it's easy to spend hours on an activity or a hobby or at a job and all that. And then we turn around and, well, I got to, let me rush into church and rush out of church and then, oh. That, that we're so keen on seeking the blessings instead of the blesser. Have we been blessed right out of our calling? Have we slipped back into the crowd? I wonder, because when you look at the vernacular or the speech of Paul, sinners of who I am chief, and this constant reminder, his Romans chapter 7 dialogue of his daily struggle, his admittance of the thorn in the flesh, which was the punch in the arm or the punch in the gut that we need every day. I, I can tell you right now, I know why I've got some ailments in my life, because I know that if I would... God, I had to have that to keep. Some of y'all don't even want to be honest with that. Needed to be reminded of the feebleness of my flesh because my arrogant self has always been more powerful 
that my now and then again anoint itself. Luke 19 and 10 ends, punctuates the story of Zacchaeus. Basically surmises and encompasses the entire chapter of Luke 19. Because as that God incarnate walked on those dusty streets, surrounded by a crowd. Everybody likes an activity. Everybody likes parties. Everybody likes commotions. He's looking for Zacchaeus. He's looking for somebody. Imperfect. Struggles, problems. That are willing to whatever it takes to seek him it's Christmas I can say it wise men still seek him and yes she did know for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost